YouTube people. Just wanted to come and talk to you guys and um, put out some more word for these last evil, terrible days that we are living in. I'm telling you, man, God is so good. But there's some amazing dreams. You know, if you're close to God, stick with God, man, he will give you answers. Life is hard, especially now that we are living in the last days and we're trying, we're seeking direction. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to turn. We don't know what's going to be our outcome these days. Things are just out of hand, you know? And, but I'm just here to tell y'all that if y'all would have a relationship with God, if you would stick close to Him, if you would let Him order your steps and direct your path, if you would delight yourself in Him, He will get, not only give you the desires of your heart, you will be able to call to Him and He will, be, he will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. If you walk in righteousness, you will be able to, hallelujah, you will be able to ask, and whatsoever you ask shall be done unto you, because you are a righteous person, you are his follower, you are his believer, you uh, walk in righteousness, you follow his precepts, hallelujah. The Bible says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. If you would stay away from ungodly people, you know, and I don't mean stay away from completely, you know, you in, in order for an ungodly person to get saved, you have to talk to them. But what I mean is you can't hang out and chill with ungodly people. You can't drink and smoke with them every day and call yourself following God's lead. Uh, following the lead of the Most High, you know. We have to, you know, be an example for people down here. You know, they're trying to find their way. They're trying to figure out what the right thing is to do and what the wrong things are that they should not be participating in. And here we are just chilling. But again, the Bible says, and um, this is Psalm 1, uh, Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You know, like, you, you, you just not chilling with, with the ungodly. You're not participating in the things that they participate in. Your life is different. You know? It's not saying that you We're not saying that we're better than these people. Because we were ungodly before too. But you're not living the lifestyle of an ungodly person. You're living a better lifestyle. And so as an ungodly person is struggling in their life, they have you to seek out to try to find the way out of that desolate wilderness of a lifestyle that we once were um, entrapped in. We were entrapped as well. We were in bondage as well. We were in chains. We were ensnared by the, the devil because we tried things. It could have been sex, alcohol, drugs, food, all kinds of addictions. Oh, money workaholism, you know, different things that we we try and they, they ensnared us and we just didn't know how to stop, you know, and these people are trying to figure out how to get out and who do they have to look up to, to show them the way if, if we're going to just be living exactly like they're living. We are living in the last and evil days, guys. As believers, God, the, the, the word of God says, the word of the most high, y'all, says, and I will explain to you guys later about 
is made. But the word, if that Bible says that we're not, the Bible says that we're not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We're not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We're supposed to be different. People are supposed to be able to look at us and see something different. Now, now we're living in the last days. You're going to need some information. You're going to need guidance. I pray every day. Order my steps and direct my path. The Bible says this, okay? His secret is with the just. Okay? I'll try to include all of these scriptures here. I'll go back through this video and, and include every single scripture. The Bible says that God's secret, his secret, is with the just. When I first read that, I may not have completely understood it, but I, I believe I pretty well understand it now. When you walk justly, when you live righteously, the Most High shows you dreams. He shows you visions. And if he doesn't give them to you, it's okay. He gives them to your sisters and your brothers. We commune with one another. We, we fellowship with one another. We commune with the Most High God which you guys refer to as God. I used to refer to as God as well. We speak to him. You know, we pray and we listen. We wait to hear what he has to say to us. And he orders our steps and he directs our paths. He shows us when something's going to go wrong. You know, if you don't believe that, if you don't believe or you don't realize the importance of you having a very close relationship with the Most High, how about if you if you at least believe in the Bible, go, go to the Bible. He warned Noah. And just like I'm telling you all now, Noah was running around telling everybody, hey, you guys got to get ready. Get into the ark. God says he's going to destroy the earth. Hey, get ready. Get into the ark. He's going to destroy the earth. The Most High is going to, you know, he's going to destroy the earth. He's going to destroy everything. And he ran to and fro and he was trying to warn them that our Father in Heaven was angry. And they didn't listen. And so the only people that survived were the few as well as the animals that got into the ark with Noah. If you don't think that what I'm saying is true, let's go to Moses. Moses told Pharaoh, if you don't let my people go, if you don't let, the Most High says, let my people go that they may serve me. And if you don't let them go, I'm going to send plagues. I'm going to send death. I'm going to send um, all kinds of things. And they would not listen. Pharaoh was hard, hard-hearted, you know. He, he, he refused to listen. And the, and the word says that the most high hardened his heart. But his heart was hardened nevertheless. He didn't listen. And what happened? Egypt was destroyed. I mean, his, his child, his, his firstborn was dead. And oh, all kinds of mess happened. Lots of death. Lots of death and plagues. Because they would not let the children of Israel go free. If you don't think that the Most High warns his people, how about Sodom and Gomorrah? He told Abraham about it. And Abraham had a conversation where he was trying to save save uh save the land. He said, if there's 50 people, will you, you know, will you, I, I'm asking you not to destroy it if there's just 50 righteous people. 
be with them 40 and 30 and whatever, you know. There was not enough the most high already knew. The place was filthy. And this is what I'm telling you guys today. But Sodom and Gomorrah was so disgusting, so putrid, such a stinking the, the, the nose of our Father in heaven that he already knew that there were not enough righteous people to save the place. When you got a little bit, a little bit of pollution, it will destroy the whole place. It, it, it's like a, um, a, just a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. Just a little bit of sin will spread like an infectious disease. And let me tell you, it has happened here in America before COVID-19, before all these sick things that are going on in this world. People trying to depopulate. I told my children, I told my children what the Most High has said to me in my spirit on my own, not from no preacher, just him speaking to me that America might be plenty of other places too, but I'm here. I see it here. This is what I see. America is a stink in his nose. And I, I kept feeling like he's about to do something here. He's going to destroy this place. This place is disgusting. People are doing whatever they want to do. They're acting like he doesn't exist anymore. They're acting like he's not gonna come back. They're acting like he's not real. They're so blasphemous. They're disgusting. Out of they, they don't reverence him. They think he doesn't exist. They laugh in our faces when we talk about our father. It's grieving me. How much more does it grieve our father? He created this place and they they say he does not exist. Anything that man creates is garbage. It's garbage. They are cloning things. And when they clone something, it something happens with it. It malfunctions. It has a disorder. The genes and cells are all wrong. Only God could create a food chain. Only God could create an ecosystem that lasted all this time and only man could destroy it so quickly. Man, and I believe that it took man as long as it took man to destroy it because our father was merciful. He was merciful. He had mercy on us. And that's why the world was not destroyed in the manner to the degree that it is today these beautiful trees that I'm passing by right now man would destroy himself anyway man wants to have spaceships flying in the air it's not enough that we have cars on the road that kill a lot of people they want to force you to do it they don't want you man does not want you to be able to walk Man wants you to have to have a vehicle for transportation. An automobile for transportation. They try to force you into this way of life. If everybody was running around on foot and you can laugh at me, that's cool. But the way that our Father in Heaven made this earth, it was safe. You could run as fast as you can into another man. You take two men and let them run as fast as they can, but they, they could run as fast as they could, but they probably would not be able to harm each other as horribly, terribly bad as they could harm one another running into each other. So I say to you people, he has to come back. It's disgusting, man. Kids are getting raped every day. Kids are being snatched from their parents and sold on the black market. Little kids, not just grown people anymore, little children are being snatched and sold on the black market like a slab of meat, like a hog. 
and they don't care that this child will be raped, a little baby will be raped, catch a fever and die. They don't care. They just get up the next day and they go look for the next one that they can find that they can sell and that's it. That's the way it is. The Bible said in the last days, the love of many would wax cold. People are cold hearted and cold blooded to the point that they will snatch your kid and sell your kid knowing that your child is gonna be sacrificed, knowing that your child is gonna be raped by somebody in some cult. And I'm talking about little babies, they don't care. If you don't think that we're in the last days, then you're sleeping and you're in danger and you better pray and ask God to wake you up. Ask him to have mercy on you and wake you up because I would be very shocked if we make it past 2021. If we make it, if the earth lasts past 2021, I would be in, in shock because my spirit is on high alert right now. We are in the very last days. And America, America is in trouble. I don't know how long the other countries have, but America is finished. I'm telling you, and I, I'm sitting right here in the middle of it. And I have to tell you like it is. America is finished. I'm telling you, it's finished here. It is finished. It is finished while we we while we while I'm speaking it's finished it has the, these things have but yet to manifest themselves I had dreams about this country evil horrible dreams about people attacking this country other people are having dreams about people coming and attacking this country now I don't know these people across the earth we're not making it up why is God giving us all these dreams why about this country why this wonderful great marvelous country that has done nothing to nobody to deserve to have nothing happen huh why is god giving us dreams that evil things are happening to this country i saw in one of my dreams this man walking up the middle of the road with a rocket launcher we were in traffic in our cars and the man did not care. He wasn't looking to see if there were police, nobody, Homeland Security, nothing. We were in DC in the traffic and this man, I was afraid. I was thinking he was coming towards us. He, and I'm, cause I'm looking at him and he's coming up between the cars and we're in a traffic jam. Like, you know, we're just at a standstill in dc and this man i'm looking in the rear view mirror and i'm like oh my god you know there's nowhere to run i can't get out or anything and i'm just looking at this man in the rear view and he's walking up between the cars with a rocket launcher on his back walking towards walking towards the white house and then the dream flipped and then there was a second man and he was walking up and the dream flipped and I was trying to warn the president that it was coming, that they were coming to destroy America. And they wouldn't listen to me. I kept saying it over and over again and nobody would listen to me. Everybody was doing their own thing. You know, they thought it was a joke and they just ignored me and they, they thought I was crazy. And God said, stop. That's it, get out. So I, I ran away from the White House because it was the attack was coming there first. So I ran away from the White House and next thing you know, it was like I heard all of this loud noise as I was getting away. Those people who were coming, they were there and they were doing it, man. They were destroying everything. They were destroying everything, it was crazy. Anyway, I'm telling you guys, 
what I know because I know what I know, okay? I'm not making up nothing. We're in the last days and y'all got to get yourselves together. You guys got to start praying and asking the most high what you're supposed to be doing, where you're supposed to be, what is a safe place for you to be, etc., etc. because I'm telling you, we are we are running out of time. And what's going to happen to America it has nothing to do with us, but it's going to happen nevertheless. What's about to happen in this country has nothing to do with any of us, but it's going to happen nevertheless.